I'll admit it, I'm a big dude that loves small cars. From two-seat roadsters to quick handling subcompacts, some of my favorite rides have always been those with minuscule dimensions. So it won't surprise you to learn that I've been a big Mini fan since the British brand's BMW reboot. This Mini Cooper, though, has done a lot of growing up for its third generation. How does it look? It took me a while to get used to the car's face after its Gen 3 nose job, but predictably, after a few years of looking at it, it now suits me fine. The Cooper still has basically the same cute vibe with an aggressive wheels at the corner stance and ground hugging bodywork. This is also one of the few cars on which I'll abide racing stripes. How's the storage? Now, you're not gonna move your whole apartment in the Mini's hatchback load space, but it's fine for day-to-day -day stuff. And especially if you're the kind of person who can get by with a two-door coupe anyways, you should be okay. The weird center area forward of the gear lever leaves me wanting for a place to stash my iPhone Plus. There's a media hookup in the dedicated center armrest, but it's not a great solution for a big phone. I'm also bummed that the secondary glove box, which used to be cleverly hidden on the top part of the dashboard, is now gone. Is it roomy? Even with this big double sunroof, I've got enough clearance for my noggin. At nearly six and a half feet tall, that's no mean feat. Likewise, I have no problem finding a good driving position and a comfortable spot on the seat. Don't make me sit in the back though, please. How does the interior feel? Now, Mini has done away with a little bit of the funkiness of its interior, but this is still a really creative and well-equipped space. The ambient lighting alone is pretty cool, especially on this large ring on the central display. And I also dig the start-stop switch, even though it's non-traditional. I think the way that it's lit and the way that it pulses is pretty cool. Is it well-equipped? This car has the $5,000 fully loaded package, which combines the premium, sport, and navigation packs. The highlights there include 17-inch wheels and dynamic damper control, a premium hardened carton sound system, LED headlights, and, of course, navigation. If I spent just that money on top of the car's starting MSRP, I'd feel pretty good about it. How's the infotainment system? The Mini Connected system does everything I want and shows off its ability in that big, very legible screen. Yeah, the user interface isn't always crystal clear. I still go down some twisted digital pathways looking for features, but it has more functionality than I'll ever use. When CarPlay and Android Auto integration show up, it'll be just about perfect. You can also interface with the infotainment system via the touchpad on top of the rotary dial. It's not something I use a lot, but if you're into that sort of thing, it's an option. Is it a good daily driver? So I mentioned at the top that the Mini had done a lot of growing up in this generation, and I think that really comes into play when you talk about it as a daily driver. I put a lot of time in this car on the highway, and I've gotta say that it's a lot quieter and a lot smoother and generally less frenetic than it used to be. You've probably also noticed that I'm not doing a whole lot of shifting around, and that's because we've got an automatic and not a manual transmission here. Most of the time that I've been in the car, I think the automatic is a fine choice, uh, especially if you're doing a lot of commuting. It's got no problem at higher speeds. I don't love it around town where it does seem to hunt more than I'd like, but for the most part, I think it's a good option as a daily driver. Is it fun to drive? 
I mean, Mini definitely hasn't gotten rid of all of the sort of mininess in this new generation of the car. Certainly this three cylinder engine is a lot of fun. It's got 134 horsepower and 164 pound feet of torque, which means that once you get the engine spinning, it's got plenty of go juice. Now, that being said, there's also a fair amount of turbo lag, so you do want to hammer it. I also think that because the engine is slightly laggy, the car really, really deserves a manual transmission if you're in it to drive it for fun. The first time I drove this car, the one of the things that I was most disappointed about relative to the experience that I was used to is that the steering has slowed down a lot. Now, it's got pretty good weighting and it's still, you know, it's pretty accurate and direct, but you don't have that feeling that you can just like whip the car around any point on the earth that you want to in just a second. The response time isn't quite as good, even though the wheelbase hasn't gotten dramatically larger. So that's a little bit of a bummer. And to me, it does diminish the character of the car that I thought was essential. I guess the funny thing is that the Mini, even this base Mini Cooper, has become more of a quote unquote engine car than a handling car, even though the handling is still pretty good. Uh, and that's just an interesting sort of change of life for the brand and for this particular vehicle. How's the fuel economy? It's great. Even driving with a heavy foot and not exclusively on the highway, the in-car computer has been stuck around 36 miles per gallon. That measures up really favorably to the EPA ratings of 37 highway and 27 city. How much is it? $1 million. Sorry, I read that wrong. It's really only $33,400. Yeah, that's still a lot, but fear not. The starting price for the Cooper is a very reasonable $20,700. Throw on that $5,000 loaded pack I talked about and you can have the stylish, fun to drive mini of your dreams, all in for about 26 grand. Still not cheap exactly, but worthwhile. What are the negatives? Of course, the options can get expensive and Mini's reliability rankings and service costs have always left a lot to be desired. Throw that in the pot with the very small dimensions and you've got a car that has a pretty limited appeal to most mainstream shoppers. Who should buy it? Even this grown-up Mini Cooper is a pretty great car for an enthusiast with a little bit of a budget and a few practical needs. You could drive this car every day and have a better chance of having fun a bigger percentage of the time than just about anything else on the market. It's a hell of a thing. Hey guys, thanks for watching our Why Buy video on the Mini Cooper. If you like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also leave us a comment, let us know what you liked and didn't like about the video. Don't say anything about the creepy voice though. Uh, also look for us on Facebook, look for us on Twitter, and find us of course on MotorOne.com.